one of the added benefits of using Swarm is that you can now schedule your containers across your cluster according to CPU resources or memory usage or a bunch of constraint and affinities. So I'll basically describe the scheduling process inside Swarm and how you can leverage your existing Docker engine with their existing configuration and state to schedule more containers and extend your usage beyond what you have or today with like probably three Docker engines, you can add more in the future. So there are two steps in the scheduling process. The first step is filters. So filters are going to naturally eliminate some nodes from the scheduling decisions because they don't respect some constraints or probably healthy behavior. For example of constraints are port constraints. So let's say that I want to schedule a Redis container on port 6379. It's bound on the host. And I know that I already have a container here running Redis, which is bound on this actual port. I can pick this node because the port is not available. So I'm going to filter out this node and eliminate it from the scheduling decisions. You also have health filters, which will say, okay, one of my engine is not healthy. It, I can connect to it again. I can retrieve the state somehow. Uh, let's say this one, and well, it's not healthy, so I'm also going to eliminate it from the scheduling decision. Hopefully, I still have one left, so I can schedule my Redis to this Docker engine, and I'll have it running here. With the right port. You also have constraints. Constraint will say, I want to run my container on an engine which has, for example, Ubuntu, like a specific OS version, or a specific Linux kernel version, a specific type of storage, a specific type of basically anything that you define when you start at first your manager. So when you start your Docker daemon, you're going to define some labels that are going to be custom to your deployment. I run it on EC2, on Fedora, with an SSD, with a bunch of other parameters. And you can say, I want to run my Redis container on a machine that has an SSD, for example, or that has an Ubuntu. So if here I have a Fedora, here an Arch Linux, and here an Ubuntu, if I specify a constraint saying constraint equal equal Ubuntu, is going to remove those two nodes from the scheduling decision and pick the one, the last one. The other type of filters are affinities. Affinities are like attractions between containers. So let's say that I want to run a logging container alongside my Redis container. I can say, Docker run this container Redis alongside my login container that is scheduled, for example, here. I don't know. And in this case, it's going to pick and eliminate all the nodes that don't have this login container running, specified by a name, for example. So with this affinity, the Redis container is going to be scheduled on this machine if I don't specify any constraint. So I can remove this from the equation. OK, so now we can specify attraction between containers, but it works also the other way. Like, I don't want my container to run alongside another container. I want it to avoid at all costs this type of container. So in the case of Redis, I can say, I want my Redis container to not to run alongside another, another Redis container. And in this case, it will run here. Provided that anyway, the port filter already have eliminated those two nodes, so there's only one left, basically. Yeah, that's pretty much it for the, for the filters. The second step is the strategy. 
So you have three types of strategies. Uh, the first one is bin pack. Uh, second one is random, pretty simple. And the last one is spread. The first one, bin pack, will make sure that this machine is filled with containers before going on to the second engine. When this one is filled, well, we go to this one. Random is going to spread it randomly. So we're going to pick engine one, engine two, or engine three on some random basis. And the last one, which is the most important because it's the one activated by default on Swarm, is the spread strategy, which will try to spread evenly the container based on their resources uh, available, CPU and memory. So for example, here, here, then here, they'll just try to spread them evenly. So it's like boom, 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 depending on the resources you have. If this is like the same kind of resource you have on all, the, all those machines. So first step filters, you eliminate naturally some nodes based on some properties, based on what is available, ports, uh, if the node is healthy, if it answers some constraints, and if it has some affinities to other containers. Second step strategy, and with what's left of the node that are not eliminated from the decision, you decide to bin pack to do random or spread this container. So this is the basics of scheduling. Now on top of that, you can also specify and fix resource usage. So you can say, I want one CPU for my container and I want two gigabytes of memory for my container reserved all just for this container and it's going to pick the right node for, for this. So if Docker Engine 1 doesn't have any resource available in terms of CPU and memory, it's going to eliminate it from the scheduling decision and pick the one that, is, that actually has the right amount of CPU and RAM. So you take all this, you can chain everything, you can chain constraint, affinities, uh, health properties, pro properties, the strategies, the resource management, and you have something very intricate where we will find the right node for your job.